With the simple push of a button, in July 2014, somebody in eastern Ukraine launched a missile which brought down Malaysian Airlines flight MH17. 298 innocent civilians were killed, including 38 Australians. It's our greatest loss of life overseas since the Bali bombing. Whether it was a stupid mistake or an act of pure evil, investigators are determined those responsible will be found, tried and punished. In fact, they already know who they're looking for, in big part due to the efforts of the Australian Federal Police. Almost 500 AFP officers have been involved in a joint international team and tonight, for the first time, they take us inside their extraordinarily detailed investigation. In an aircraft hangar secured deep inside a Dutch military airbase is the most remarkable, the most confronting reconstruction in modern aviation. Two and a half thousand bits of a Boeing 777, ranging from dinner plate size to large chunks of fuselage, put back together by police to make a macabre jigsaw puzzle and a crime scene like no other. The people that were on the plane, the people who died, can't tell their story. So it's up to us uh, to build that picture, to put that jigsaw puzzle back together, who actually carried out this event. Tonight, behind the scenes of the international police dragnet as they zero in on suspects. Australia's lead investigator. It's the largest investigation now that we've undertaken as an agency uh, since um, the, the 2002 Bali bombings. Our chief forensic scientist. I think the forensics in this matter is, is going to be really critical. Heartbroken families. I miss my brother, I miss them. And the man those families are counting on. I'm a chief prosecutor, and in the end, um, justice will be done. It was late afternoon on Thursday, July 17, 2014, when this once mighty aircraft was last in one piece. Now, it's Exhibit 1. When you see the parts of this plane reconstructed in this way, what do you think? It's, uh, it's emotional to see it like this. Probably brings home what these families went through. Uh, these are 298 victims that, uh, that were on the plane. It truly is a haunting sight, even for an experienced cop, the AFP's Assistant Commissioner, Ian McCartney. These people are victims of a war, not involved in any way, unwittingly flying above. It's a really terrible thing to happen. These people were, were on holidays. They were going to work. And, uh, you know, in, in the split second, that all finished. Investigators can now prove what most suspect, that Russia was an accomplice to the crime. They've tracked a Russian missile launcher as it crossed the border from Russia into Ukraine. They've also exposed the cruelty of the timings. Like thousands of people before them, the unsuspecting passengers of MH17 were arriving and checking in at Amsterdam Airport. At that very time, the missile was unloaded and driven to its launch site in a paddock. And it was when Dutch local city councillor, Piet Plug, farewelled his brother Alex and his family. We have one, one picture of them when they, when they left. 
Well, my brother and his wife and son boarded the plane and had fun and looked forward for their holiday. Uh, another group of people was very busy with preparing for an attack on a plane. All the preparations for downing the plane were at that moment going on. Three hours into the flight and passengers are most likely finishing their meals, watching movies, sleeping. 35,000 feet below and a 70 kilogram missile is launched. Now that the MH17 has been rebuilt, it's painfully clear how that missile brought the plane down after it exploded just over there to the left outside the pilot's window. It was the force of the shrapnel from the exploded missile that first pierced and then sheared off the cockpit section of MH17. The plane was torn apart before crashing in eastern Ukraine. The message I got, I think, was an SMS, and, and it said something like a, a civilian plane has been shot down by a missile over eastern Europe, 200-plus um, dead, including, at this stage, 27 Australians. I literally did sit up in bed, flick the light on and, and swore, because um, I, I couldn't really believe what I was reading. Now it was time to act. The AFP's chief forensic scientist, Dr Simon Walsh, scrambled a large team together. Within hours, they packed their equipment and flew to Ukraine. Some of the obvious you know, things that we're going to need to cordon off a crime scene, and obviously for this type of work, you know, some of the necessary materials such as protection equipment and, you know, and body bags for the collection of the remains. This had to be airlifted across the world into a vast crash zone in the middle of a war. There was speculation and rumour of bodies being looted, of parts of the plane being taken. Did you ever consider and did your colleagues ever go, this is just going to be impossible? Yeah. We're not going to be able to do our job? Oh, I think for sure there was a genuine conflict zone. Um, one of my colleagues um, said the important thing that he learned early on was the difference between outgoing and incoming mortar fire and what it sounds like. Um, so they literally were working in a, in a very dangerous environment. It was so dangerous, they ended up putting the human remains on refrigerated trains to a safer area from where they were flown to the Netherlands. A sad convoy finally brought home the magnitude of the event. Last week, we traveled the same road to Hilversum Airfield in the center of Holland, where the real forensics work was done, on the wreckage, the luggage, and many thousands of body parts. Every single um, item of human remains is examined to the same extent. Clothing, personal effects, uh, marks or scars or tattoos, jewellery, uh, forensic dental procedures are applied, fingerprints are taken, um, DNA samples are taken. But I guess you've always got in the back of your mind or even most likely in the front of your mind that families are waiting on that news. Absolutely, absolutely. We really are aware of how important it is for, for families to, to receive um, really any information, but we've, we've recovered their loved one. Then there was the criminal investigation. Who did this? All up, the AFP deployed 450 officers led by Detective Superintendent Andrew Donoghue, who's now spent the best part of two years working in The Hague. What drives the commitment? I mean, it's a massive commitment from Australia, isn't it? What drives it? Yeah, what, the victims drive it and the, and the search for the truth. But at the end of the day, um, the AFP want to give a voice 
to, to our victims, our, our 38 Australians that were on board that aircraft and the 298 uh, in total. And whilst we've identified 296, and that includes all of our Australian victims, sadly there's still two uh, that remain unidentified and they're both Dutch victims. That cruel fact brings us back to Dutchman Pete Plug. His brother was a biologist, going on a holiday with his wife Edith and son Robert, and there's no trace of him. I think my brother is cremated, in fact, at the crash site. Uh, yeah, you, you can search for years, but uh, uh, when there is nothing, you won't find anything. It seems very cruel that not only could they not find your brother, but they could not find any of his luggage. Nothing. No, nothing. No, not a watch, not a wedding ring, uh, not a phone, nothing. And uh, uh, my sister came back, uh, my nephew came back, and my, and my brother, absolutely nothing. Anguished relatives like Pete are relieved to see the police getting closer to a conviction. Investigators have pinpointed nearly 1,500 relevant pieces of wreckage, matching paint samples to the missile and shards of glass where shrapnel pierced the cockpit window. All essential evidence for the eventual trial to be led by the Dutch Chief Prosecutor, Fred Westerbeeker. What is the most striking evidence in your mind and what is it telling you? All the material who, who has led us to this, uh, to, to the launch site. Um, uh, the fact that we exactly know where it was launched is very important for the rest of the investigation because knowing where it was, you also have a good clue in where you have to find the perpetrators. As we were able to reveal last year from images posted on social media, the missile was trucked across the Russian border on the morning of the crash and returned to Russia that night. The difference now is investigators believe they have the corroborating proof for a watertight case. The drudgery and the, and the slow, meticulous, tedious work of police investigation, it's not like you see on the television. Um, it is combing through uh, mountains and mountains and mountains of information. Mammoth, a mammoth task. It's, it's a huge task. It, it is a really, really, really huge task. Police have interviewed 200 witnesses and seen, literally, half a million photos and videos. Then there were 150,000 phone recordings. Amongst them was this one. A soldier in the convoy seeking directions to the eventual launch site near the village of Snizne. Perhaps the most damning and chilling evidence of all is the smoke trail from the missile, photographed by witnesses and validated by its timing and trajectory. The involvement of Russia uh, is now very clear. What do you think of that? What do you think of the way they've approached the investigation? Shame, shameless. Uh, they are dancing on the graves of the victims. I'm quite confident now that what you've seen in terms of what happened to the aircraft, in terms of what weapon was used and where it was launched is pretty clear. And I think it paints a very clear picture about uh, what we're saying uh, is alleged to have occurred. It would almost seem like it's case closed. No, there's a lot more work to do yet, uh, so we can present that in court uh, whenever that may be down the track. And you believe you will? Absolutely. Investigators have identified 100 people involved in either the transporting or launching of the missile. They have their names and even their phone numbers, but still, they need to know more. What we still need is to have a better clue of all the people who were involved, who, who was in command. What did people know who were part of this operation? 
By clearly implicating Russia, Chief Prosecutor Fred Westerbeeker has the hardest job of all, to put them on trial or before an international criminal tribunal. The huge amount of information we have really pr proves what has happened, where it happened and how it, and how it happened. We just have to determine exactly who. Yes, that's the last step we have to take. Do you believe you will find that person or those people? Yes, we must and we want to find uh, the perpetrators and I really believe that we can succeed.